fear. The war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in times of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secrets of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. And I will offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, (laughs) nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, righteousness from the God of his salvation. (laughs) This is the generation that seek him, that seek thy faith, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And even lift them up, ye everlasting door. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. This is the assistance that we need. We need those persons that are in the center section that's not part of the immediate family. See if you can find some room to the left or to the right because we do need this senior, this center section for the family immediate. So those to my left and my right make room for those persons when they come out. Make room for them when they come out, please. We need room for the immediate family. Deacons, we might need your assistance to put some chairs in the aisle way. Okay? Put some chairs in the aisle way. Again, in the middle section, if you're not part of the immediate family, immediate family, Immediate family. We will bring chairs up so that you'll have some place to sit, but we need to make room for the immediate family.
start, a deacon, start on the front. Start at the front row. Well, right by me. Right adjacent to the, uh, just on one side, just on one side of the aisle. Right my name. want to be ready when he comes hallelujah to his name has he signed you up mm -hmm. right, right my name, my name. Right my name. Oh. this is a celebration a celebration of a life lived in Jesus Christ well write my name his name hallelujah you may be seated you may be seated you may be seated 
Amen. Truly, God, he is good. And all the time, he is good. Amen. Just some housekeeping, just some housekeeping uh, orders as we go through this service. Uh, we've got so much time. We have so much time. It's Saturday. We have so much time to get to the uh, cemetery. Now, the first thing that's not going to happen is I'm not cutting time out of my sermon. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not cutting any time out of that. So if we're longer than we supposed to be, it's because the person is not complying to the order that has been assigned to them when it's time for remarks. Okay. Uh, the person that's going to be doing remarks have been identified. So they're, they're, they're on the program. We won't be adding anyone to that. And the time allotted is is two minutes, and we have some pastors that's going to do their remarks. And one thing a pastor will definitely be able to show you how to do is to follow instructions. That is to give remarks and to give the remarks within the timetable of two minutes. Now, one thing pastors do when persons come up, they put a clock on them. They put a clock on them. So when the pastor come up, you know what y'all can do? Put a clock on them. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. But we're here to have a joyful time because Deacon Calvin Baker Sr. was an awesome, awesome, awesome man. And here at New Tabernacle, we loved him dearly. So with that, Reverend Henderson, our youth pastor here at New Tabernacle, He's going to come and lead us further through this worship experience. Amen. All right. Amen. We're going to move forward with this. Uh, our Old Testament reading scripture will come from Pastor Carter. Our Old uh, New Testament will come from Reverend Brooks. Then we have our prayer comfort by Pastor Johnson in that order. Amen. 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 I will be reading from the 23rd number of Psalm, the 23rd number of Psalm. The Lord is my, is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've just read to you the 23rd number of Psalm in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his most holy word. Know for our scripture emanating from the New Testament, John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether ye, I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know it not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Six verses of the 14th chapter of John. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading here for the education of our soul. You may be seated. 
What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege, what a privilege it is to take everything, not some things, but take everything to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're back for another one-time occasion. We don't come in the name of Johnson or Johnson. You don't come in the name of Carter or Tally. But there's only one name. We come in the name of the one that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Lord, we come first of all to thank you for the life of Deacon Baker. Thank you for his faithfulness, his faithfulness to his God, to his Lord, to his Savior, his faithfulness to his family, O oh God. What a father he was. In his faithfulness to his pastor and his church. And Lord, you said in all things to give thanks. You knew times like these would be coming. So Lord, we simply say, thank you, master. And let us consider, oh God, that this is not the end. I know we see flowers, I know we see a casket, but this is not the end. For you told us in your word, for those of us that are saved, when a time like this come, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So Lord, I pray that you would strengthen this family. This family is saved, oh God. Strengthen them and let them hold tight and close to you and let them hold on to each other, oh God. And when they miss their father, when they miss their loved one, let them be able to look in each other's eyes and see that daddy is still here through them, oh God. Now, Lord, we pray for Pastor Chet Johnson. Oh God, use him like you have used him so many other times before. But this is a one-time occasion. And we need you to anoint him freshly from the top of his head to the very bottom of his feet. You said to have a celebration, oh God. So we do say hallelujah to your holy name. For you are God that don't make no mistakes. There's a time to live, and there's a time to die. There's a time to mourn, and there's a time for rejoicing. So come in, Holy Ghost. Have your way. And it's in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. Amen, amen. amen. Um, we're going to have a solo from this daughter, uh, Rashanta Baker, as she, she comes. Let's clap it up for this daughter as she comes. Amen. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my 
way. Heart, feel lonely, long for my head.
I dare you to lift your voice in the sound of victory that death has no victory because the sting of death was taken away by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now come on and tell him thank you. Where is he worthy from? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the saints. We're going to move forward in this. We give him glory at this time and honor. We're going to have acknowledgments and condolences. My sister Cheryl Wig is in that order. But if you're going to give him glory, we'll give you 30 seconds. If you're going to give him glory, we'll give you 30 seconds. If you're going to magnify him, we'll give you a few seconds. If you're going to praise him in spite of, we'll give you a few seconds. Now let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Come on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sister Cheryl Wiggins. I'm the church clerk, and I am here to read the um, acknowledgments and condolences. Please know there are far, far, far too many for me to read at this time. I will acknowledge some and read some, but the family will respond to each and every one at a later date. And to the Baker family, just know that we are here for you. We love you. And hold on to his unchanging hand. He's going to bring you through, I promise. From the city of Gary, the office of the mayor, the Baker family, please accept my most sincere condolence for the loss of your father. His legacy will live on through the people whom he touched. If Crystal and I could be of any assistance during this time, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. May the love of those around you and the below scripture comfort you at this time. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfer our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables even to the subject of all things to himself. Sincerely, Mayor Eddie D. Melton, City of Gary. We have condolences from the Urban League. On behalf of Dr. Vanessa Allen McLeod, the Board of Directors of the L Urban League staff know that we are here to, to provide you with continued support during this period of bereavement. Humbly submitted, Vanessa Allen McLeod, President and CEO. From the West Side class of 1975, to Mr. Jerry Baker and family, our hearts were deeply saddened at the news of the passing of your beloved brother, Mr. Calvin Baker, Sr. We thank God for the life and legacy of a wonderful Christian man. We bow to the sovereign will of Almighty God, who has called his beloved servant, Mr. Calvin J. Baker, Sr., from labor to reward. May your heart be consoled by the word of God. God will wipe all your tears from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Revelations 21 and 4. Done this 13th day of April 2024 by the West Side Class of 1975 Reunion Committee, Dr. Jean Hope Chairperson.
from the New Hope Church, Resolution in Love and Memory of Deacon Calvin Baker Sr. On behalf of the pastor, Christopher Johnson Sr. and New Hope Church of Gary, we extend our most heartfelt sympathy on the passing of your dear father, Deacon Calvin J. Baker Sr. Whereas we believe that the sound of God's trumpet, he will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. First, th first theologian 4 and 16. We further believe God will wipe all away all your tears. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. The former order of things have passed away. Therefore, be it resolved, we bow in the most humble submission to the will of God, our Father. We know him to be the one who will never fail, nor will he leave us comfortless. The New Hope Church family will continue to cover your to cover you, Sister Rashantra Baker, and your family in prayer and expressions of love to encourage you in this difficult time. Humbly submitted the 13th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024, Pastor Christopher J. Robinson, Sr. From the St. John Baptist Church to Sister Betty Baker and the entire family of Brother Calvin Baker. Pastor, Robert, Pastor Robinson and the St. John Baptist Church family extend sincere condolence in the passing of your brother-in-law, Brother Calvin Baker. May it comfort you to know that many prayers are with you at this time. We will continue to pray that God will give you peace and strength in the days of head. And may, and may precious memories of Brother Baker always linger in your heart. 1 John 14, verse 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will go again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Done in the order of St. John Baptist Church, the 13th day of April, 2024, Reverend R.E. Robinson, Senior Pastor. From the God Glory International Church, in Gary, on behalf of Pastor Vernon Betty and the God Glory International Church family, we extend our heartfelt condolence to the family and loved ones. Our thoughts and prayers are being offered up on your behalf. Be strong in the Lord and in his power and his might. With love, sincere, God's Glory International Church, Pastor Vernon Beatty. First Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, to the family of Deacon Calvin J. Baker Sr. in loving memory, whereas having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, God never makes mistakes. Whereas God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes, this earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Therefore, to the family, everything that happens in this life is a gift. Even as we struggle through challenging times, we are gaining strength and wisdom in God's divine plan. Because of that, you will always have people around you that love you. We further resolve that life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road of sweet eternity. The First Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church will continue to keep you lifted up in prayer adopted and humbly submitted on the 13th day of April, 2024, with the, first, with the official church seal of everlasting love, done by the order of Reverend Dr. Dyke Edward Lee, Senior Pastor. The new net the New Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Deacon Ministry Resolution for Deacon Calvin J. Baker, Sr. To the family of Calvin J. Baker, Sr., let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, 1 and 3. Whereas God our Father has seen fit in his divine will to call our beloved Deacon Calvin J. Baker Sr. to eternal rest on March 27, 2024, and whereas through effectual testimony and conduct becoming a Christian, he demonstrated a life of personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and whereas holy rip holy proclaim in first Thessalonians, excuse me first Thessalonians 5 and 13 that such persons are asleep in Jesus and will arise again and that we are to take comfort in these words let it be resolved that as pastor officers and congregation of the new tabernacle missionary baptist church on april 13 2024 we solemnly join in submission to the will of our Father in the earthly departure of Deacon Calvin Baker, Sr. We resolve to, re to support the Baker family spiritually, emotionally, physically with every means available to us. And we resolve that those of us who remain will commit ourselves to the fulfillment of the will of the Lord our lives that we may have blessed assurance reuniting our Deacon Baker on that blessed occasion where we will dwell in the Lord and in heaven forever. Prayerfully submitted, Elder Deacon Douglas Paget, Diagonal Ministry Leader, Reverend Chet J. Johnson, Senior Pastor. Resolution. To the family of Deacon Calvin Baker, Jr., on behalf of the pastor, officers, and members of the New Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, we offer our sincere condolence to the entire family of Deacon Calvin Baker, Sr. Human words are always inadequate in the face of unspeakable loss. There are no human words that can soothe a grieving heart. While it will not take away the pain that you feel being separated from Brother Baker, the family we offer to you our love, prayers, sincere condolence as you journey through these days of grief. And we seek God's comfort and guidance to carry you through these difficult times. You will, dream, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Christ told the disciples on that last night, in Christ we have assurance that the joy will come. Be strong and courageous in the knowledge that God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. So those that who believe in him will never die. As you walk through this time of loss, we encourage you to take comfort in the many wonderful memories of Deacon Baker and find joy and knowledge that you will see him again when your life journey is through. May the life, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Humbly submitted, this 13th day of April, 2024, the New Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church family, Sister Cheryl D. Wiggins, church clerk, Reverend Chet J. Johnson, Sr., pastor. Thank you. I will now read to you Reflections of life. Give me one moment, please. I need my pen. Calvin J. Baker, Sr was born December 14, 1952, the third of five children born to the late Tommy Lee Sr. and Jesse Lee Love Baker in Gary, Indiana. He was a graduate of the Westside Class School in Gary, the class of 1971. Calvin's career took off as a steel worker at Inland Steel, 
where he spent eight and a half years as a steel worker. He was determined to create a life of stability, so he bought his first home, which he would soon fill with the love of family. After his time at Inland, Calvin went on to serve as a security officer at Methodist Hospital of Northwest Indiana, where he would spend the next 28 years providing protection. After retiring from Methodist, he was such a busybody that he just couldn't keep still and began serving as a security officer for ISM security. He would spend the next five years with ISM until he finally embraced retirement. On May 3rd, 1979, Calvin joined in holy matrimony with Barbara Jean Hill. And to this union of 46 years, they raised four beautiful children. Calvin was an amazing husband, father, and grandfather. Providing and protecting was a priority. Calvin enjoyed working in the yard and helping family and friends out. He had the best yard on the block, perfect cut hedges, and the greenest grass. Family and friends knew that if they called on Calvin, he was coming. He could fix anything, and if you asked how to do something, get ready to hear a full breakdown on how to do it. He didn't believe in cutting corners. He would say, slow down, take your time, so that you can get it right. Calvin had a signature stance where he would place his fists on his hips and give you a stare down to get you straight. When he was focused, he wouldn't let anything distract him. Calvin was known for saying, when I mean business, I mean business. Case closed. Calvin, Calvin's love for God was, was professed at an early age. And he always saw, showed that he, he always showed that in his willingness to help others and in the lyrics of some of the many songs he wrote and produced. That's right. Calvin loved music and wrote songs like, You Can Call on Jesus and Bring Them Down. He also wrote an R.B. song called, Don't Try to Judge Me. <laughs> Calvin's faith continued to grow, and on April 29, 2000, he fully dedicated his time and service to the New Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Gary, serving many years as the search church's security, and deacon. Many would say how concerned he was about the church members passing out goodies from his pocket while opening the doors for you to enter and visit the sick and shut-in. On Sunday, you could count on him to make sure everyone was good, and he would be the last one to leave the church. Amen. <laughs> Calvin was preceded in death by his lovely wife, Barbara J. Make Baker. Parents Tommy Lee Sr., Jesse Lee Baker, brother, brothers Tommy L. Baker Jr., Kenneth A. Baker, he leads to cherish his memories, four children, daughters, Darius R. Baker of Elkhart, Indiana, Rashanta Baker of Prime Point, Indiana, Nakia Baker of Gary, son Calvin J. Baker Jr. of Portage, Indiana, brother Jerry Margo Baker, and sister Donna R. Baker, and sister-in-law Betty Baker, all of Gary, Aunt Clara Carr of Op Opelika, Alabama, thank you, and Uncle John Baker of Gary, Indiana, eight grandchildren, Kenneth Baker, Kendria Baker, Darius Baker, Devon Baker, all of Alcott, Indiana, Gregory D. Glass Jr., Kalia, Kalia Weatherspoon, Emmanuel Adams, Nolan Baker, and two great grandsons, special cousin Sharon Newburn and Ronald L. Parker, both of Gary, 
Reginald Thornton of Los Angeles, California, Melvin Love of Sacramento, California, special nephew Tuan Baker, and special friend Lamar will always cherish memories of him. Thank you and God bless. Amen, amen. Usually it's custom when you hear a record of that of someone's legacy, you will stand and give honor to that person. If you don't mind, let us just clap and stand for the life and legacy of Deacon Baker. Come on, let's give it up to hear what this man was and what he did. That is an honorable, honorable task, amen. We're gonna move forward, um, right as the program says, and we're gonna call down Reginald Thornton, Deacon Pageant, and Deacon Castro, um, right in that order. I'm gonna help you three out just here. First, give an honor to God, to Pastor uh, Johnson, Pastor Hart, Pastor Robinson, Pastor Carter, Pastor Talley, Pastor Johnson, members and friends. So when you guys go, you already in the cover, everybody. We can go straight forward. And right after them, it'll be Pastor Robinson and Pastor Talley. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Give an honor to God. First of all, what can you say about a great man other than you're great? My cousin Calvin. My cousin Calvin was a man of integrity. He was a great father. He was a great brother. He was a great son. He was a great brother-in-law. He was a great friend, etc. My cousin Calvin, one thing about him, he was a man of his word. When he said that he was going to do something, he did it. You know, it's hard to get someone to pick you up from the airport, right? It's hard to get someone to pick you up from the airport. Every time that I've asked Calvin to pick me up from the airport, he was right there, right on time. I'll, I'll miss that, and I appreciate that. One of the things that my cousin Calvin was always proud of, he was always proud of the fact that I danced on Soul Train. Every time he introduced me to someone, he always say, that's my cousin from Soul Train. And that made me feel so proud. And I remember a time when he came to visit me in Los Angeles. And for those of you who already know that Calvin was a great songwriter. Every time he came to, to California, he always say, take a, I want to meet a producer. Take me over a producer. And I remember one particular time he came over there and he said, Reggie, uh, he got in my car. He said, Reggie, take me over to Barry Gordy's house. I said, I said, Calvin, I don't know Barry Gordy like that. <laughs> I don't know him like that, but he wanted to go over Barry Gordy's house, but I couldn't take him over there, but we went around Hollywood, Los Angeles, and he had a great time. Um, my cousin Calvin, uh, I'll definitely miss him. He used to call and check on me, and make sure that everything was okay in Los Angeles, and um, I know that time is of essence, but I just want to say I love my Cal cousin Calvin. I'll miss him, and I just want to do this for him because... Every time I talked to him, he always, Reggie, I saw, I looked at that video of you on Soul Train. <laughs> train. And, and I, I do want to say this about Calvin. Calvin was the type of guy, he never complained about anything. I talked to Calvin about a month and a half ago, and as, as sick as he was, he was always very optimistic. He was always positive. I never heard him say that he was in pain. I never heard him say anything negative. He was always a great person. But I just wanted to do this because... Calvin, I love you, man, and I, I miss my cousin, Calvin. And uh, I want to say this, Calvin.
Test him, test him. I can't, I can't do all of that. <laughs> First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It fits, right? He had a servant's heart, servant's heart, and he was committed to the cause of Christ. And when I first really saw him, besides going and taking communion to your grandmother, next to him I saw him, he was uh, on the door, he was a security guard. He's a security guard. He got a blazer. He was so into it, he bought a blazer. They had these blazers on. And I got to thinking, I said, you know what? If I'd have thought about it then, I would have put, on that blaze, on one side, I would have put usher badge, because he did that too. On the other side, I would have put deacon. He did everything. He did everything. So he understood what it meant to be a servant. And I said, where is he getting all this energy just like the Energizer Bunny? He was all over the place, made sure the place was secured, the place was locked up, but he took it seriously. You know, He was really serving before he became a deacon. And so everybody depended on, on him a lot in this church, and we really, truly going to miss him. And uh, he had a concern for others, a, a real concern for others. In spite of what he was going through, sometime I tell my wife, I said, you know what, I got to call uh, Deacon Baker and see how he's doing. The phone would ring. Hey, Deacon Padgett. And I said, oh, well, you know what? He said, I just called to see how you doing. See, how am I doing? And I said, you, you know, but he's going through, but he's concerned about others, how are other people doing. And so he was that kind of, and, then, and, I, <clears throat> and he'd be talking. I mean, I didn't realize he could talk so much. <laughs> but, you know, I said, man, I thought this guy was quiet. And he started talking and telling me about his whole day, everything that he did. So I had to do him like Kenny would do. His brother Kenny, he said, you know what, I'm tired of talking to you. And then just hang up. <laughs> And Kenny would do you like that. But anyway, he was happy in Jesus. Happy in Jesus. And like he said, it was a pleasure just to be around him. And he got it right. And I had to tell him, you know, because I know the children told everybody. I said, you hard-headed. Even when he's going Amen. to he come, he would struggle. Amen. He, he would get here, and he'd Amen. be sitting there on that corner. You know what I'm saying? Take it easy. Amen. You know, take it easy. You're gonna, and then he look up, and he's standing Oh, that's it? Amen. The two minutes? For our pastor. <laughs> Jesus knows. So when I talk, the 24-second shot clock goes off. All right. All right. I just want to say to the family, it's hard when you lose some, a church member or a family member. And it's truly hard when you use, lose a brother who's a deacon. And Because I, I truly loved him. And his, uh, when I know his health started failing, but he was still coming to church, God put it in my spirit to every time I saw him, I hug him and I say, I really appreciate you. I love you, you know, and, and you would see the little smile of go on his face and everything. And uh, I used to have a nickname for him. It was Shake and Bake. I was like, Shake and Bake, Deacon Shake and Bake Baker. And the reason I called him that, because he was all over the place. He was here when I got here. He was still here when I was getting ready to leave. But that's just, just the kind of servant he was. He was a good man. He was a family man. He loved his grandchildren every time. We went somewhere to eat. He had his grandchildren there with me and Christian. And we always uh, found a way to sit at the same place at the table. And I, I just learned so much for him. And um, he wore many hats. And speaking of his hats, sometimes he wore so many hats, he, he would shake and bake with uh, forget which hat he was wearing. I remember when his wife was sick, he came up to me and Deacon Patrick, he says, hey, anybody take communion to my wife? And we looked at him and was like, Ain't you a deacon? <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, so 
you know, just, just those type of things I'm, I'm a truly miss about him. He was loved, he was cherished, and anytime I could look for help, he wasn't far away. But now I just have to do like us all, look to, look to the hills from when comes my help. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love the Lord, come on, clap your hands, give God praise. You ain't got to do me no different. Put that two minute on up there. Put it on up there. <clears throat> I give God honor and praise. Uh, we understand it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. For his compassion, they fell at the night. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. I thank God for the angel of this house, Pastor Johnson. And I just want to say this real quickly. I pray for you too, Pastor, because I know I'm a new pastor. Um, but one thing that I found out early is that it's hard to find faithful people, dedicated people. And this family are truly the epitome of faithfulness. Come on, y'all. Give God praise for these children. Shauna, the way you stood up here and sung for your daddy. The way you stood up here for your mama. I want to tell you as your pastor, I'm proud of you. It's easy to love God when everything he does is favorable to us. But sometimes in those dark days, can you still trust him and say, Lord, my eyes are still on you. I need you. I got to sit down. My time is up. But if you don't mind, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get it twisted. Tell him, say, we still got the victory. All right. They didn't believe it because they believe that if he's here, he's then got the victory. But last time I checked, it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I need you to find another Christian believer and look them in the eye and say, neighbor, we still got the victory. Even in this, Lord have mercy. I think I only got 10 seconds left, but I need you to touch somebody else and say, victory, victory. I speak it over your body. I speak it over your mind. You've got the... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, for the Lord is good, and his mercy endure forever. And I'm going to show Pastor Robinson how to do it in less than two minutes, because he went over two minutes and 32 seconds. But to the angel of this great house, amen, hallelujah, to Pastor Johnson and Johnson, amen, Amen to Pastor Maurice Carter and to all of the other ministers and to this family. I've been knowing this family for a, a very long time. Let me just say I've been knowing I knew Barbara, amen, since we were knee high to a duck, amen. And then she, when she married Calvin in 1979, so that means in between the dash of 52 and 2024, 20, I knew Mr. Baker for 45 years. A small statue of man, but a giant at heart. And, and, and let me say this. I knew he loved the Lord. Amen. I knew that without a shadow of a doubt he knew the Lord. I don't know about you Negroes, but I knew he loved Barbara Baker. Did y'all hear what I say? I knew he loved Barbara Baker. So I'm just going to say uh, there's nothing that John Talley can say to sway the pains of your grief, but I want to commend you to a one of a higher power, and his name is Jesus. Look unto the hills from which cometh your help. All right, we thank God for all of our speakers. I want to move forward. Let's get to a um, letter to my granddad from the grandchildren. Then we're going to have a musical selection um, from Sister Trina, Robinson, Darcy, and then lastly we'll have a message of comfort 
by our very own Pastor Chet J. Johnson Sr. Amen? Even if the pain I feel after losing you cannot be measured, I believe that the brightest shining star above my head is you assuring me that you are in a better place now. You are a guide, leader, mentor, mentor, coach, and a teacher to me. You are also a great source of inspiration and motivation for us to never give up despite the obstacles we face. You indeed, you indeed live the well-spent life. I hope you are dancing and having a great time in heaven, eating neck bones and donuts and having your coffee too, <laughs> watching Channel 7 News. You love that. We love you, Granddaddy, and we thank you too. We meet again. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. If you love the Lord, why don't you put those hands together, and let's seal it with a praise. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. To the bereaved family, to all the saints who are here, and to our host pastor, Pastor Johnson, to all the pastors, to my pastor, Pastor Chris Robinson, to the Baker family, this is, this is rather hard. The last time I saw him and me and Sean was trying, we was talking to him and he went to pull my hand. I said, now you gotta be still, you gotta, you gotta be still. And she said, daddy, come on now, it's Trina. He always called me, what Tasha at? Tasha, stand up. That's, he called me twin. He called us twins. And he said, Tasha, I said, no, it's Trina. So we just said twin. And that's what, that's what he called us. I heard everybody say he, he talked a lot. But he was a man of few words when I was around. He just pushed me around and think he was the boss. Because I think he was a little bit taller than me. Oh, we're going to miss him. And I had a song in mind, and when I was sitting over to the house, and Shauna just kept on saying, I won't complain. And I never heard her say he complained. And so I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and sing it, because Shauna just kept on insisting. <laughs> the song just simply says, I've had some good days and I had some hills to climb I, I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when, when I look around and I think things over, oh, all of my good days, they outweigh my my bad days so I 
Oh Lord, I won't complain. Although my my clouds hang low, I can't hardly see the road. But I. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, our Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. We magnify, we glorify your holy and your righteous name. For you truly are a good God, and you're greatly to be praised for as we look back over all of our faults and we see our needs that you supply them, Father God, every day according to your riches and your glory by Christ Jesus. So even on an occasion such as this, not planned nor even desired, but Lord, we always declare that your will be done. So Father God, we thank you with all that you do. For Lord, you know what's best for us than we do for ourselves. So we come now asking your favor to fall anew and afresh upon this family and friends and all those who gathered together today to bear witness to a just cause for a celebration of life life in Christ Jesus, one who's made it a mindful commitment uh, to continue to stay in your grace, in your favor, by serving you with every ounce of their being. So we thank you, Lord, for Deacon Calvin Baker Sr. We thank you, Lord, for what he has meant to us and what he has been for us. But most of all, Father God, we thank you that he was what you desired him to be a servant of yours declaring jesus christ 
alive in the life of those who believe. So bless us now, Father God. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, all of what has been said and suggested concerning this life. But now, Lord, we ask you to continue to consult and comfort this family that they know, too, that you are God and you're God all by yourself. And we're claiming victory for we can declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And it is in Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And all of God's children said amen, amen and amen again. We thank God for, um, thank you for uh, Reverend Henderson for leading us through this order of service. Amen. Thank God for, for all these pastors that are here uh, sharing uh, with us. Uh, and we're grateful for the support of all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this choir. Let's get a little hand clap and pray for this choir. And, and the two songstress that shared with us uh, in such a wonderful, in such a wonderful and endearing way uh, to this family. Uh, this family, the children cut their teeth here at New Tabernacle because of the presence of their grandmother, uh, their mother, and their father, who've been instrumental in gearing them up, amen, and setting them on a solid foundation jesus christ and they've all grown to embrace that truth and allow it to live within them to the best of their ability none of us are so thorough and complete within our ability to, to suggest that we're able to do it with all perfection but thank god that jesus does not look for perfection but for those who purpose to live a perfect life in christ jesus and this family truly have done that and continue uh, to do that uh, so well. Uh, uh, Deacon Baker, as we said, one of a kind, one of a kind. He's a, he's a fella that, uh, you know, uh, if God was to ask the pastor, well, who do you think? Well, Deacon Baker would not have been a thought. Let me just, I'm not going to say who would have been a thought, but Deacon Baker would not have been a thought uh, because he was so much a part of the movement of the ministry of New Tabernacle, as it was suggested, he involved himself in so many things. Uh, at the end of a Sunday, I could have been in there for 15, 20, a half hour before I exit the building, and I go outside and I'll see Deacon Baker right there, right there waiting until, I'll say, Deacon Baker, no, just come and ask me how long I'm gonna be so, so you can get back home. You don't need to stay that, stay that long, but that was just, that was his makeup, even though I told him, now come back and let me know. He'd sit there and he would wait until I would exit the building. And you couldn't, you couldn't have a better fella as a deacon on your side. And so I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him dearly. I'm going to miss him dearly. But God... God needed him even the more so. Amen. He's made his mark. He lived his life according to God's plan, according to God's absolute and perfect will concerning his life. And, and now we yet remain on this side of the sun. If we believe God's word to be true, no doubt he's better off, amen, than we are. But he has not gone someplace that we don't have access to. If we choose to climb the same ladder, amen, that he climbed then we can to also ascend up into that place. And so I'm going to um, go ahead and get busy with this message. And uh, Reverend Talley got a clock on me too, y'all. So don't think he just clocked it. He got a clock on me too. Amen. Now, he's going to give me more than two minutes, but he got a clock on me. Man, I don't... Listen, these young folk in here couldn't do what you did. I'm telling you. Oh, they do all that other stuff, but see how high they le their leg don't get. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they do all that movement, but they ain't going nowhere. I'm saying, what is this fella doing? Man, now that soul train dug deep into your soul to still be able to do that. And I'm not even going to suggest what I think your age might be, but you older than the average person's ability to be able to do what you did. 60, so he's my age. Goodness gracious. Lord have mercy. 
That's your classmate? Lord have. And I thought I was doing something. You know what? Let me say, the last time Pastor Tally tried to do something like that, he was in surgery getting his knee put back together. <laughs> he was good when he dropped it once. He was good when he dropped it twice. But he stretched himself and tried to get three. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, but man, I, that, was, that was something, man. Shoot. That was something. Amen. Amen. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 66 through verse number 69. We thank God for all of you uh, for being here. <clears throat> John chapter 6, verses 66 through and including verse 69. Amen. And it reads, From that time many of his disciples went back. And walk no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him. Lord to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure. That thou art that Christ. The son of the living God. Amen. I wanted to speak just for a moment. I'm staying. <clears throat> I'm staying. I would have to believe that most of us know Jennifer Hudson, the singer, the actress, the talk show host. Jennifer Hudson, in her very first movie appearance, won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in the 2006 musical drama, Dream Girls. And for all of those who saw her performance, would probably say that sealing the deal for her to having received the Oscar was all to do with her singing the song. And I'm telling you, I'm not going. And while singing the song, you could just feel the power of her conviction. You can feel the pain if she lost the connection to her companion. You can feel the position she took to accept no compromises. The song tells of a mind that was made up, that was not hesitant in expressing the emotions of feelings that come with having a heart and soul bent love unconditional with someone. Look at what the lyric says. And I'm telling you, I'm not going. You're the best man I've ever known. There's no way I could ever go. No, no, there's no way. No, 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 no way I'm living without you. I'm not living without you. I don't want to be free. I'm staying. I'm staying. And you, and you, you're going to love me. Even though the rough times are showing, there's just no way. There's no way. We're part of the same place. We're part of the same time. We're part of the same blood. We both have the same mind. And time and time, we've had so much to see. And no, 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 no way. I'm not wake, waking up tomorrow morning and finding there's nobody there. Tears down the mountains, yell, scream, and shout like you can say what you want. I'm not walking out. Stop all the rivers. Push, strike, and kill. I'm not going to leave you. There's no way I will. And people who heard her sing this song were crying. And not just women, but men were crying also. Crying because of a, either identifying with this kind of love connection or because of yearning for one like it. It's this type of love that the apostle Paul had with the Lord when he said that nothing would be able to separate me from the love of God. Not death, nor life, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any such thing will be able to separate me from the love of God. 
And the reason being is because this type of love has power. It has the power to hold you when life problems seem to be trying to bring you down. It has the power to dry up your tears when struggles have you bound. This type of love has the power to be your protection when your enemy's on your trail. It has the power to be your guide when confusion is heavy in the storm. This type of unconditional love have the power to provide your needs when there's no oil in your barrel. Yes, it's a powerful song. But Jennifer Hudson was singing about not leaving her man. But Paul was talking about not leaving his master. His master being Jesus the Christ. And here in this text, without going too deep into it, Jesus is with his disciples. Not just the 12, but there were many others that followed him to this point. Jesus had earlier in chapter 5 fed 5,000, not including the men and the women, as well as he walked on water. Yeah. There were so many who witnessed this, and because of it, they followed him, but not all followed him genuinely. Look at what it says in verse 25 and 26. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? Meaning, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because you saw the miracle, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. And what Jesus was pointing out to them was that they were following him, not because, watch this, of the free message, but they were following him because of the free meal. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, there are many people in the church today looking only for a free meal. They will ignore the fact that there's a free message. They're looking to get something to satisfy their flesh. But as soon as you start talking about what is required for them to do, they will drop you and they will leave you in a moment. Look at what it says in verse number 27 through 29. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. But for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. And my brother and sister, look at verse number 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can bear it? And verse 60 says, and from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And my brother and sister, when it comes to receiving stuff from the church, Folk will line up outside the door before the doors open just like they will with Walmart, Kmart, all these other stores around Christmas time when something new is coming out. Folk will line up outside the door. They will even camp out there the night before to be there first to get something. But soon as Jesus placed upon them a responsibility to do something, most of them left, most of them walked away and suggested and declared that the Lord was too hard of a taskmaster, that he was putting more on them than they can handle. But do you not know whatever God puts on you, he's got you in his hand, and even though you're yoked up with him, he's the one that's really pulling the load you're just with him in fellowship, establishing a companionship type of relationship that he holds you in the power of his hand. And even though you might be sweating, even though it might appear as if you're carrying a load, the load that you're only carrying is the fight that you have with yourself because there's one part of you that say you ought not be here. Then there's another part that say you ought to be there. And whenever you're serving the Lord is not because he put more on you than you can handle it's just you got to deal with your own flesh and your
your spirit and your flesh is always battling as to what decision, what choice you ought to make in life. Do I do it God's way? I do I do it the world's way. That's the only struggle we have in this life. Satan don't put any pressure on us. Satan don't have the power to pressure us. We pressure ourselves with not having made a decision. Young people call that peer pressure. But peer pressure is a pressure you feel as a result of not having made a decision. An alcoholic, you offer him something to drink. Ain't no peer pressure. Shown up. Already made a decision. That's what he's going to do. Drug at it. Offer some drugs. Ain't no pressure. Already made the decision. That's what he's going to do. Right? A person who made a decision not to do drugs, you can have it spread all over the table. Not going to do it. Made a decision not to drink. He can go to sleep in a beer place and will not take a sip because of making a decision. But the ones who feel the pressure is the ones who have not made a decision whether you're going to do it or not. Jeez, God called them lukewarm. He said, make a decision. I wish you was hot. I wish you were cold. Choose what you're going to do. What does this, what does this mean with? With, with, with Deacon Baker. From this time for many left. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. He said, will you leave me also? Since everybody else left. Y'all know how it is when folk, when folk leave and they, they, they feel as if it, 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 they can't leave out by themselves. You know, how it is. You, you know how it was when we was in a club when the when this person got tired, they said, come on, y'all, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, come on, I've had enough. Let's, let's leave this place. Always feel the need to have to walk out with somebody else. And the same thing happened in church. Nobody get disgruntled and upset in the church and not try to pull somebody else out with them. Nobody want to walk out of the church by themselves. They've always whispered into somebody else's ear. And it's amazing how so many folk will follow somebody else's disgruntledness outside of God's house. And then once you get out the door, they gone this way and ain't stutting about you. All they wanted to do was to let folks see you leave out with them. And now you're marked with them. He said, he said, will you all go also? You know, y'all know, going to leave too? No, no. They, they saw him and they were participants in, in, in the feeding of the over 20,000 folk. The Bible said 5,000 plus women and children. And I'm being very conservative when I say 20,000 because most of them had more than wives and they had a lot of kids. So if you assign one wife and two kids per person, that's an additional 15,000 right there. So if we're conservative, Jesus fed over 20,000 folk with two fish and five barley loaves. And the, and the disciples were the one distributing. So they knew his power. Then they saw him walking on water. And even Peter said, look, if that's you, Jesus, bid me to come. Peter walked out there with him. And as long as his eye was on him, he was on top of his circumstances. But as soon as he started looking at his circumstances, he began to fall right in them. And he said, you of little, little faith, will you also go away? Will you be influenced by the behavior that you see of other people? You know, when you security, you see them coming in and going out. No. When you usher, you see them coming in and going out. You can tell usher, security can tell the effect of what their experiences was inside the sanctuary by the expression on their face coming in and expression of their face coming out. Yeah, yeah. You see them coming in with smiles. Then all of a sudden they got a, a, a disgruntled face. Or they got a disgruntled face coming in, but they leave out with a smile. They're the first one to recognize and to be able to see the difference in their expression as it relates to what their experiences were. 
But you know how to maintain the same expressions of joy coming in? Coming with your own joyful noise. Yeah, you're not relying on nobody else's joyful noise. You come into the sanctuary with your own joyful noise. And I have to believe that that's what Deacon Baker did. He had his own joyful noise because he was always in the midst and around other stuff that was not really favorable to worship and praise. But in the midst of it all, he sustained himself. He maintained himself. He held on to what he believed. Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter, that, 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 that tough fella, Peter, wanted to cut off the fellas here. Peter, the one who denied him uh, three times. But yet, Peter's content at heart uh, had the right, but he just had to be re, re, realigned his, his thinking. But his heart, his heart was there, but there was a, there was a disconnect between his heart and his, and his soul. And once God put that together, uh, he was able to preach. And the Bible says over 3,000 souls had been saved. But then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, look what he said. Whom shall we go? Now, he, now whom is not, you know, it's, 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 it's a noun, it's person, place, a thing, right? Whom, that's what it said, right? Whom shall we go? He was not talking about where can we go. He wasn't talking about a place. He talking about a person. He, he said, whom shall we go? Now, who else is out there for us to hook up with? Who else is there for us to partnership with? Who else is there that I can put my total reliance in, my trust in, that I can put my hope in? Who else is there that I can be blindfolded and not fearful about the direction that I'm going? Who else is there that I can be going in the midst of a storm and not be concerned about the peace that I'm going to have? Who else can I be with that I can be hungry and thirsty and know that my food will come to me? Who else? is there whom shall we go who else should we go with he said thou has the words of eternal life 10 and 10 the thief coming up to kill he said you should have abundant a more abundant life but here Peter didn't say he didn't say that you have the words of a good life down here. He didn't say, he, he didn't say that you, you know, you, 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 can, you can give me a, a good life while I'm down here on this side. You know, Peter's focus, uh, uh, Peter's focus just as it was when it was that, who do men say that I am? So you liars, John the Baptist, one of the other prophets. Well, who do you say that I am? Make it personal. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. The same thing can be suggested even here in this day. Lord, who shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. In other words, Peter was looking beyond his situation right here on earth. He was not looking to a house on the hill. He was not looking to a favorable employment. He was not looking to perfect health. He was looking to the promise that God had offered him. Jesus Christ had revealed to them that of eternal life. That's where this fellow was. The kind of service, watch this, that he gave cannot be a service that's focused on the things of this world. Couldn't happen. You can't be focused on the pleasures of this world and endure the hardships and the struggles and the demand and always make yourself available even when not asked. This was a fella you didn't have to ask him to do anything. You didn't have to ask him to be on post. He was always there. If, son, if Bible study, if nobody was here, he was here. He made sure the door was open for folk to get in, and he made sure the door was closed after everybody left because his focus was beyond this. And I believe that's the reason why he would say, I'm staying. 
He, he was saying, and we believe that thou art surely the Christ, the son of the living God. That was Peter's declaration, which gave him cause and reason to imply that he was going to stay. Wherever the other folk went, he don't know. I don't know. I don't know where they're going. But I'm staying right here. And that's what Brother Baker said. I'm staying right here. Even during the pandemic, he said, I'm staying right here. Even during inclement weather, he said, I'm staying right here. Even when it seemed like things wasn't going right for him physically, he said, I'm staying right here. Even though it did not seem to be the right thing to do on the surface, he said, I'm staying right here. He said, I'm not leaving. I'm not. He said, no, 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 no way, Lord, am I ever leaving without you. I'm staying. I'm staying. And this is what I really like. He said, we're of the same blood. For Jesus Christ died for us. We are of the same mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. He was one with Christ. He said, I'm staying. I'm not going nowhere. And because he declared to stay, because he said he's not going nowhere, when the Lord called his name, he knew how to respond. He knew how to answer. And Jesus Christ has received him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he said, I'm, I'm staying. He said, I'm not living, Lord. I'm not living without you. Trying to live life without Jesus Christ. It's just trying to live without bread and water. But he even took it beyond that. He said, man does not live by bread alone but by the word that proceeded out of his mouth. And what proceeded out of the mouth was faith developing inspiration to drive us back into proper alignment with him. That when God sees us, he'll see us in him. And seeing us in him it qualifies that association with the death of Christ. And since it qualifies our association with the death of Christ, the Bible said it's once for man to die, after that the judgment. But if we have been associated with the death of Christ as believers, then we have already satisfied that requirement. So he was already dead while he was yet living on this side of the sun. So his transitioning from here to the other side, he didn't have to die to get there because he had already died. God called him from labor to reward. And he left the mortal flesh, not dirt, but the residue of dirt, dust. We're made from the least valued substance of matter on this side of the sun. Dust. And God could take something that had no value and create such a value. Who is man that God is mindful of him? That God will come down and visit him. That God will love him so much to die for him. That's why he said, I'm staying. That's why sometimes, you know, he couldn't and he, you know, he was here. Y'all know it. Every time y'all wanted him, but, but he was, he was here. You know, he, he, was, he said, I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying. Peter, we left all the way out there. What you're going to get is far greater than what you think you, you left. Right? Eternal salvation. The greatest offering that can ever be extended to humanity. And I extend that even right now. Don't take for granted just because you're in a church building. No, you're a Christian. Right? You go to McDonald's, that don't make you a hamburger. Right? You go in your garage, that don't make you a car. Right? Right? So just because you're in a place don't make you what that place suggests you ought to be. So there might be someone 
who are not in fellowship, either by not having ever surrendered a circumstance your experience have caused you to become distracted and you've lost sight of where your salvation is. The pastor's all up here. Church is all over this place. It's not about being part of a building. It's about being a part of a body. It's about being in Christ, not in New Tabernacle, not in New Hope, Mount Moriah, Cap, not, in, not in those. It's in Christ, the solid rock I'll stand. No other ground is sinking sand. So if there's someone here, someone here, you know that's you. You know you need Christ in your life. Don't take it for granted. Tragedy strikes between your steps. Every time tragedy hit, you got one foot on the ground, the other foot in the air. You need some solid ground for that one foot to be on. And you need to know the ground you need to put that second foot down onto. And without Christ, you have no knowledge of how to position yourself while in, in the storms of your life. So we invite you to come. Don't let Satan keep you trapped in your seat. Because watch this. You're going to get out that seat. <laughs> You're going to get out going somewhere. But you don't want to go out of this chair where you're sitting today. Not having the assurance that you're right with Jesus Christ. And don't think your, 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 your sins that you're aware of can keep you from having access. The reality of it is that all of us up here sin and still commit sin. But Paul said, it's not me, it's this body that I'm trapped in. It's my heart's desire not to. But when I desire to do good, evil is always present. You can't escape it because you're living in an evil body. Then when you would do good, it's there. So don't take this invitation lightly. If that's you, if that's you, Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to the Lord. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ. Oh, my brother. We offer Christ. Offer Christ. Oh, my sister. Oh, my sister, this is what he'll do. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Oh, come. Mm -hmm. Oh, come. Come on to Christ one more time. One more time, we offer Christ. We offer Christ. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. This is what he'll do for you. He will give you brand new life. Life abundantly. Oh, God. Come on. And then the funeral directors, they're coming. The funeral, funeral directors. Funeral directors are coming. Need some help with the flowers. We can get some assistance with the flowers. We're going to leave the plants here till you come back later. All right, just the flowers. I'm going to stay back. All in his hand.
Paul Bears.